Welcome to MacGyvering Handouts for Distributed Learners, where we'll use one line of HTML code and a free scanning app to problem solve. Thanks for joining us. So the problem that I was experiencing that you might be able to relate to is that in pre-pandemic times, I was finding myself collecting and grading and returning all kinds of paper handouts across multiple class sections, and it was a bit overwhelming. And on top of that, you might hand out some materials in class on a day a student was absent, and maybe the day you were wanting to return papers, the student was absent then. So ended up with a folder with lots of random bits of paper and it was hard to keep track of. And if you tried to have both uh, Canvas and paper submission options, that Canvas doesn't handle that really well. So that was existing and then last spring prompted by the pandemic another layer of complexity emerged when we realized we needed to make sure all of our materials our handouts in particular were accessible to all kinds of distributed learners so we would have students face to face with us we would have students attending remotely and through a digital connection and then also needed to be prepared for students who might access things asynchronously so inspired by MacGyver, who I, I'm guessing that you may be familiar with if you clicked on this presentation to attend. Um, if you're not familiar, he was a 80s TV character who was known for coming up with non-lethal resolutions to very complex situations using very simple tools that he had on hand. So two of his favorite tools were paper clips and chewing gum. So the equivalent of our paper clip and chewing gum, on the left you'll see, that we decided every single person needed to be able to find the handouts in one common place. And that was going to be embedded as a view only Google Doc in designated Canvas assignment pages. So each assignment would have its own Canvas page and on each of those pages there would be a way to access the handout that was needed. So that was the paperclip. And the chewing gum was, all right, if students access these materials, what if they decide to print them and complete things in a print paper format? or now they have these various digital files, how are we gonna manage the submission? So if you're gonna find it in Canvas, the chewing gum was you're gonna submit it to Canvas. So you could either submit that as a copy of the digital file that you downloaded, or you could scan a paper copy so it becomes a digital file. So then everything can still be submitted in the same kind of format in the same place. So those were the two parts of our solution. The paperclip part, in six steps, we figured out how to embed a Google Doc directly in a Canvas page. So step one, you see a screenshot of part of one of our Canvas assignment pages in one of our courses. And that little red circle and arrow is showing that that is where you go from the regular Canvas editor page into the HTML editor. And once you're in that editing page, then I'll move myself so you can see. Then you would copy and paste just this single line of HTML code. And I'm thankful to a blog post that I found in the Canvas community blog that gave me this information. So those are the first two steps. Then you would go back to the Google Doc that you had created for your handout and make sure that the sharing setting, at least the way we used it, is set to anyone on the internet with the link can view. That way it doesn't matter how students are logging in or accessing your course through whatever email they may have. And make sure you copy that link. So you've copied that link, you're holding on to it, and then you move back to that Canvas assignment page in the HTML editor. And I do not know very much HTML at all, so do not be intimidated if this looks weird to you to see this code. But if, for example, you know you want to embed your file at the bottom of the page, then you can just scroll all the way to the bottom of the page of code, look for that placeholder text that you had about sharing the document, and paste the share code there. So that's what's highlighted in yellow at the top of the page. And at the bottom of the slide, it's a, just a good habit to click back from the HTML editor back into the rich text editor to just see, get an idea of how that embed worked. Does it look the way you want it? Is it in the right place? And that's what you see at the bottom of the slide. And that, that's it. Those were our six steps. So what we ended up with is what a student would see on the left. Again, this is our sample Canvas page at the top. 
left, you'll see that every assignment in our course has three tabs at the top, purpose, task, and criteria for success. So that's something they're used to. And when they scan down to the bottom of that page, they see that there's the embedded handout. So it's visible. Um, even if they don't read any other text, they have a sense of that's the thing I need to click on. And the way they'll access it is to just click file and then make a copy. Then they make their own editable copy that they can save in any place that is helpful to them. Or a random place that may be difficult to find later, that's a separate skill set. If I click out of this slide for a second and show you what it looks like in the actual Canvas page, here I'm in edit mode. So there are my tabs at the top of the page. And if I scroll down, I see here's my embedded handout. So one benefit I didn't realize right away, which has been very helpful, is if I'm in Canvas and I notice, for example, oh, this title, it doesn't really match the title of the handout. That might be confusing to students. I can go in and change that right here. I don't have to go back into Google Drive. I can make that change here. And if this same link is embedded in multiple Canvas sections, again, it's one stop to make any kind of modifications. And you can even make them on the fly. If a student notices there's an error in class in the moment, you can come right in and make that change. Um, so that's what it looks like on the back end side. And again, if you click the little HTML bar that's slightly off screen here in the bottom right, that's where you can get into the HTML code. And you would scroll down and see, here's that line that we saw in the slide earlier. So that gives you a sense of what it looks like in real life. So that was our paperclip. And then the second part was, OK, if students access these documents, they may decide to work digitally. They may decide to print out a copy. And in class, we even do bring some paper copies because some of our assignments we feel actually work better completed on paper. And students have very different camps. Some want everything digital so they can manage it best. And some students need that physical act of writing. So now we've got a situation where students can all access the initial file. But then we want to make sure that we manage the submission in a helpful way. So everything in our course gets submitted digitally. So if they originally made a copy of that digital file over here on the right, you see the instructions that show up in each of our assignment pages. You just upload as a Google Doc or a Google Sheet or Google Slide. Works the same for all three. Over on the left, step one is actually a step we skipped in the first version of this process. We didn't actually ask students if they were already familiar with any free scanning apps, so we could just use the ones they already use. Um, upon running this last this past semester, we realized that they one that we didn't real know about was something called Cam Scanner. So if that's something your students are familiar with, you may suggest that to them. But over here on the right, you see that the two we test drove ourselves and suggested where there's a Google Drive app. Um, that will turn your phone into a mobile scanner. And then Apple, the Notes app, can serve as a scanner as well. So if a student did complete something on paper, they still need to submit di digitally. The benefit of a scanner, as opposed to taking a photo, we found is that the scan tends to be a much cleaner image. And you have the ability to mul take multiple screenshots or um, photos and combine them into a single PDF. So that's easier to manage on the instructor end. Um, you can see in step three, what you're looking at on the right is the, in the instructions that we include with every set of assignments. And then four, one thing we incorporated this semester was to take some time in one of our class sessions in the first week and actually give students a time to practice using the whatever preferred scan app they chose um, to make sure they could make it work. So that was a benefit as well. That has solved a lot of back and forth subsequently. So to sum up, again, here's how we MacGyvered uh, handouts for distributed learners, two steps. Make sure everyone can find the assignment in Canvas. It's very obvious where it is. They have a simple process file, make a copy for accessing it. And then to submit it to Canvas, if their Google Drive is registered with Canvas, super easy. Just go straight to your Google Drive, scan and scroll down for your file, submit it, or first create a PDF through the Scan app and upload it that way. So thanks very much for coming and listening. And I put my email there because I would be very interested if you're doing similar things or have suggestions. Would love to know what else is happening in your world. So thanks very much for attending. Bye.